Hi and welcome to Transmission. Uh, today uh, I'm joined by Simona Capitolina. Um, so welcome. Well, thank you. How are you? Today? I'm good, thank you. Um, so tell me a bit, a little bit about sort of yourself. Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, I'm a musician mm -hmm. and I'm a designer as well. So um, um, I've been a musician probably for about um, about ten or fifteen years, mm -hmm. and been a well, yeah, well, I'm not allowed to call myself a, an architect because I I, I I failed the exam, but um, graduated with a bachelor of architecture at RMIT, and I've been working in the industry for about twenty years, but. Um, uh, yeah, just um, really continuing on with my music mm -hmm. uh, and doing architecture in the background, I think, and, and just trying to merge those two and, and see where architecture and music combine as performance. Okay. So, so what sort yeah. of music? Well, it's I guess it's loosely defined, I guess, as well, specifically defined, I guess, as techno pop, but. I mean, I've been I've written about three albums under about two different names. So one of those names was Fluorescent. Mm -hmm. um, I've only recently just come out as transgendered, even though I've been trying for you know since I was since, well, well probably for about you know 25, 20 years I think. Yeah. Um, so I I even I guess the architecture career I guess was was some kind of closet, but also the first you know maybe ten years of my music career was also inside a closet I guess which was fluorescent I think we were speaking earlier just about how um, I performed under a pseudonym because I was I guess trying to yeah, ex exude I guess a, a sense of my femininity without actually really trying to come out but since I've come out in the last two years um, I've been performing as Simona Capitolina mm -hmm. and um, yeah it's just been a completely different experience, yeah. um, much more satisfying. Uh, I've been writing subconsciously about transition and the journey of transition and the, I guess the um, emotion and the pain and the triumph of the journey. Mm. So um, it's been really exciting to start performing it this year and to uh, yeah get an album ready and get it out there so yeah. yeah it's fun have you noticed sort of that your music has changed sort of over this time like I know artists tend to change their music a little bit sort of over time but has there been a change since sort of coming out and there's been I think a change in terms of confidence and whilst I've been singing about the same things it hasn't really made much sense to anybody um, because there has, it, it's really been a, crit a critique, I guess, of my own masculinity and uh, what I'd write before, but now it's more, uh, I mean, I've been right that what I'm doing at the moment, the songs I'm performing and my album is um, about five years worth of work that is actually over the threshold of transition. Mm -hmm. So it's about this sort of before, you know, and after. Um, but my voice has changed completely through this, recording so mm -hmm. it's actually quite a, a significant kind of documentation I, I like musical documentation I think of transition mm. which is important for me some people do blogs and some people do um, uh, you know like you know w whatever I guess but this is a I'm, I'm capturing it mm. on, on, a, on a record yeah um, which is fun and it's very confronting like doing the video for still which was the first single um, you know I've always wanted to be myself in a music video, I suppose, rather than sort of sit in the background. Um, so it was quite confronting to do. Mm. Um, yeah, so there, there has been, I guess, a change in terms of that it is me really owning what I'm doing, you know, singing drama, which is a little bit scary because it's got such a Phil Collins reference, <laughs> but I could put like a Madonna style onto it with like the singing microphone, with the headless microphone. I did a gig at the Tote <laughs> the other night and <laughs> someone was like, I'd never seen you before, and I just saw you standing up there with like a headless mic, and I oh, was sorry with a with a you know a, a, a head microphone, yeah. and just thinking, what are we going to get, you yeah. know? And it was just a a very physical drumming, um, you know, on electronic pads, um, and singing. So, which is essentially what I do when I'm dancing. Yeah, I always have been on dance floors for twenty years, just in the corner just like drumming yeah <laughs> so and singing <laughs> if it's a vocal track so yep. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I've been able to own it now. Yeah. I understand I'm the air guitar kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was an air, uh, air drummer from way back. Yeah. So now I've actually got sticks. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. So have you noticed, though, that so when you were writing the songs, you said that your voice has changed. So have you had to alter how you perform songs that you used to... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, there, there are some songs that were written in a register which was, you know, just too far down. Yeah. Um, and, tr yeah, like so, trying to sort those out are, are, are at times quite difficult. But, but then a lot of my older songs were written, I, I always collaborated with, with, um, with, with female vocalists. Mm -hmm because I was trying to deliberately blur the lines between who is the singer and, and um, so um, I've been able to perform those quite easily. Yeah. Whereas um, the ones that I was singing, you know, when I, they were quite, or quite the dark ones yeah. have been quite interesting. So I've had to really change hmm. the way I've sung them. But as, as an album to hear this sort of progression in, I mean, my voice has actually gone up an octave yeah, you know, and that's been through a lot of, of vocal training and um, speech therapy. So, which I didn't think was that going to be that much of an, an, an advantage yeah. of um, the transition, um, I guess, um, therapy that I would go through. Yeah, but I actually found it to be probably one of the most rewarding parts of transition. And it's kind of cool that you've got that documentation as well. Just yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, well, one of the, I mean, I was very conscious that, that my voice did sound very girly, I suppose, when I was, you know, 11 or 12. And I was at a boys' school and, and um, the last thing I wanted to do was be found out at the boys' school. So um, I, um, I got some Roy Slavin and H.G. Nelson tapes and... Um, just listen to them over and over again so that A, I could deepen my voice, B, I could talk uh, like them and have mannerisms and expressions like them so I could, I could come across very blokey mm. um, and I could try and be funny so I could try and sort of joke my, my way. I guess what I did when I went through boys school was to try and, I was so afraid of getting found out. Um, that I sort of took on their clothes and took on their voice and took on their language and took on their kind of, you know, fought them and, um, yeah, so I was putting on a bit of a front for a while, but then I just gave up. Mm. But, but then I started speech therapy and in the f I came out of my first speech therapy session just crying because my speech therapist was saying, well, you know, it's... Um, you know, was just sort of telling me where to s where I guess to speak, and all of a sudden I, I reconnected with this instinct that I had to speak as an eleven or twelve year old mm -hmm. that I was afraid of, and I just remember walking through Treasury Gardens, <laughs> just crying of happiness mm. that I could feel something that was so innate. Mm. Yeah, and I could reconnect with with something in my childhood because I think that's a really important thing about transitioning so late in life. Mm -hmm is trying to c reconnect with things of your childhood. It's not about, oh, you know, I was, you know, I hated my teens and I hated my, you know, being a boy and all that kind of stuff. It's something I could reconnect with. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's something that's really, really cool. So thank you very much for sort of <laughs> talking to us and, and giving so much of your story. And cool. So thank you. Mm -hmm.